Good morning, welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Now, first of all, I hope you had a fantastic Christmas. And also to give you a heads up, I had a complete day off yesterday. But the reality is today for me is the busiest day for family, etc, etc. Uh, because we've got cousins and whatnot coming over today. So I've got to keep today's episode rather short. Uh, so I hope that you're not feeling too far rounded or well rounded from eating too much turkey cake and pudding. Uh, and in this episode we have got four topics. And the fourth one's actually probably one of the most curious ones. Is what we've got up on our screen right now. So number one is actually a hat tip to get FPV. Uh, a short while ago, I need to get this round the right way round. Uh, there we go, we'll put it round that way round. Uh, remember we had the dodgy IB crazy antennas? Well, it took them like a month to reply to my ticket and then they obviously apologised. Uh, and then sent it across uh, via UPS priority. Uh, and it literally got here within about two days. Absolutely crazy. So. Once they did realise that they hadn't sent me the replacement for the dodgy childlike uh, antenna, uh, they've sent me another one. I haven't opened up the box yet, but I assume that they would have checked it. If they didn't, you're going to find out about that tomorrow morning. Uh, so, yeah, get FPV. I'm just going to do these in, in, all, in all order. Uh, Wombat build is progressing. It is coming along slowly, but surely. Uh, there has been quite a bit of issue for me around the booms, trying to get the booms at the right length. I still think I might come in a little bit more this morning, uh, but the motor mount's been cut uh, and we are awaiting the next part of the series to get recorded. So I've not put any glue her ne next to her next. Uh, that didn't make any sense at all, did it? Uh, so as you may or may not know, there's no edits in these episodes. So there has been no glue at her anywhere near her. Uh, but I've just been using pins to pin her up and trying to work out how everything's going to go together, which is a massive tip for you, uh, is that if you're ever unsure on a model, pin everything on the model and see what happens. Uh, it's it works brilliantly for this Wombat build, uh, so that I've just been bringing the booms in shorter and shorter uh, until I'm quite satisfied of the way which she's going to feel uh, in the sky. Well, get the CFG right in short. Uh, Painless 360. Now there is a fantastic tip uh, about the Tyrannus about pre-centering all your trims. So I'm sure if you're flying fixed wing or a flying wing uh, and you've um, just done your maiden and then you trim the model out in that flight uh, and then all your trims are all off on the bottom bars. Well what you can do in the one of the menus is just center all your uh, reset all your trims but incorporate those trims as sub trims. Now, there is a massive point which Lee missed out in that episode. And by the way, you should definitely go and watch that episode because it is very good. But there is a massive point which Lee missed out in that episode. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've got actually got this scheduled to, to go live in the new year. Which is, if you do do that with your model, you will get caught out if you then go and copy that model uh, to another model memory in your Tyrannus. And if you forget to set or go back in there and set all your trims back to zero... Uh, is that you end with all your servos out of whack. So what I mean by that is that if you imagine you've got your servo arm like this and you've had to trim it like that, that difference in angle may not be, may not look like a lot, but in the air it could be the difference between you rolling um, very, very nicely in the air or just going like that in the sky, which is not very visually attractive. Uh, so... Do go careful of that, especially if you're like me, who copies a lot of models. So I'll go and pick the nearest flying wing, which I've used before, and I'll go and copy it. And if that's got sub trims bent into it, there could be a difference in flying between the, well, different, like, depends how bad your angles or how, how, how a trim your model is, is that if you've put a servo here or maybe on the opposite side, uh, is that will cause, diff cause a difference. Uh, when the servo goes to pull the surface and if you've forgotten that you've been and put sub trims in your model uh, it can catch you out at a later date so fantastic tip uh, I'm glad that Lee put it up there because it's in my to-do list for the new year uh, to, to go and get it published but uh, anyway like I said trying to keep this morning quite quick now the main topic of today is actually very straightforward is that this little rainbow flying wing uh, which you saw a couple of episodes ago 
is that I've been her out and I've been and flown her, but she was really dirty in the sky. As in, that as you'd bring her round into a bend, she'd just want to drop and spiral into the ground. It caught me out a couple of times. So I put, I, I've got a fair amount of lead on that nose, a disproportionate amount of lead. Uh, and if I use the, it came in the box and it said 110 millimeters, and I'm just gonna make sure that that really is right. Uh, yeah, it says 110 millimeters in the manual for the C of G line, and we are grossly nose heavy. I mean like the C of G is almost out at the front of the servos. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, just around the front of the servos. So we are uh, maybe a good two centimeters in front. Now here's the thing, is that if you are scratch building a model, so let's say that we didn't know the C of G of this wing, there are plenty, there, well there's a couple of really, really good C of G calculators out on the intervals. And that's what we're gonna be doing this morning. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a measurement mat down there and we are gonna go and fill the measurements for this model into that and find out what the C of G should be, whether the 110 millimeters are right. And of course, if it is 110 millimeters, then that means that maybe I have too much throw on the elevons, or maybe I need to put some differential in there so they're not pulling down so, uh, going down so much uh, compared to going up so much, which can cause us to stall. So, I don't know. Let's go and find this out together. So, let's have a quick look. I'm just gonna put that on there and I will be coming back. And I'm gonna have to go and measure this on here, but I'll discuss each measurement. So the first measurement where it says wingspan, so that's from the outermost edge to, to, to the other outermost edge. So let's go and put this on the desk. I'm trying to get this level. So for me, that is for the actual wing, I'm gonna include the winglets. So that's 585 millimeters. So I'm gonna type in here 585. Now we need, excuse me, now we're gonna click on the next one, the root chord. So that is from, ah, now this is gonna be a little bit tricky because this model has this piece cut out. So what I'm gonna go and do is grab a ruler and guesstimate where that would be on the model. So I need two rulers for that. And there's nothing quite like doing these RC coffee chat morning, coffee chats ad hoc, is there? I'm trying to find all the bits which we need. And what I'm gonna do, let me just go and put that and this isn't gonna be terribly accurate at all, I'm sure, I know that. Let's get, well, the main thing is, it, is as long as it's roughly right. So there we go, so we're on that one there, and I'm just gonna, no, I need to turn this over. And apologies that I'm doing this off screen, it would just be ridiculously hard to try and do it on the screen, and I am including the yellow bombs uh, in this calculation. And I explain, oh, I need to get this into millimeters. So 185, let me just type 185 in there, 185. Now, what I just did there was, I got two rulers, and the first ruler I carried like that, so that it would intersect, so I'm ignoring that we've got a big hole cut out of here, uh, and I've just run that straight up, and then put a ruler down this way from the tip down, and where it's intersected, it came out at 185 millimeters. Brilliant. The next measurement which we've got is on the wing tip. So again, I'm gonna include the elevon in there. Uh, this is only gonna be, we, wanna get, we just wanna get an idea if we're roughly right. So if imagine that came, comes out, so that's, 155, so I've just measured 155 to where the Elevon would have finished. And of course the Elevon is part of the wing, it just so happens that that part moves. And I'm sure somebody will tell me that's probably totally incorrect, uh, but for as far as I'm concerned, that is still part of the wing, it's still gonna give it lift, potentially, when, it, when we're flying straight. So I'm including that in there. Now, those, all, those three measurements were all pretty straightforward, including the mildly tricky measurement to go across to find the center and then do the uh, 185 millimeters down there. Now this bit here is what ever catches everybody out is that you've got sweep, okay? And what that means is that it's the distance from the tip, we had a, a ruler going all the way across there, it's the distance from here down to the tip of the wing. 
Okay, now the easiest way for me to measure that is to use one of those big cutting mats, which I've got on most of my desks. And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to follow that line across, just quickly put a ruler down because that's a lot blooming easier. So I've got the nose on there, which is that line there, and that comes out at 15 centimeters, so 150. So I'm going to put 150 in there. And that was the me that was the distance. So if I go up 15 centimeters or 150 millimeters, that's the height from that corner to here using a straight line along the top. So that's that bit sorted. So now what does it say? Uh, so 20% for all rounder. And what does it say? CG distance 14.29. So that's suggesting oh, I'm going to click on update. Let's get that right. Click on update there. CG distance. They're saying 106, which I'm just going to measure this off on here, which is slightly in front of let me just put the ruler. So I, I really don't know if you're going to be able to see this, so I'm going to do my best to show you. So there's the C of G line which they suggested, which was at 110. Now, this, the, other, the measurement which we've just come out in there is just above the servo, so 106 millimeters there. Now, if I put my fingers on there, and if I go out, and I already know that, if, yeah, it's grossly nose heavy. Uh, so I already know is that if I go and take that model out and go and fly it now, well, Normally, if it was for you, that would be perfectly fine uh, and we would be flyable. Let me just make sure that's, yeah, they're all in millimetres. Uh, that would be a great uh, setup for your scratch build. So if you'd scratch build a flying wing or you've got a flying wing which you bought from eBay or a swap sale or something like that and you've got no idea what the C of G is, this calculator will give you a very, very good idea on what things should be. But in my case, that's kind of told, told me that, well, they were about right. We're only talking three millimeters of being out. So there's something not quite right with this model, as in, if that's the C of G, which they're saying, which is about there, and I'm still having to put shed loads of lead in there, what that means to me, let's just turn this on. What that tells me is that I need to go very careful of that down, or this model seems to be extremely sensitive to the down movement of the elevons. So it seems to be there's an up, and then down seems to be a bit of an issue. So I don't know if that's, uh, I mean, yeah, I need to go and work out, or sorry, it's an aileron movement. I'm saying that, that is really flat. And I know this, the, the left wing's coming up higher than the other one. I'll look at that in a moment. But I'm not seeing anything here which would... Yeah, I don't know. What what do you think is causing the uh, tip stallness on it? Is in that you'll fly around, you'll bank around, and then it'll just want to dive in towards the ground. Uh, and if you don't put lots of lead on, well, after putting quite a fair amount of lead in there, and I'll see if I can pull this off, and put this into proportion, the flying weight with the battery on board, let me just reset that at the moment, is with the battery is 119 grams. And then I've been and had to add 15 grams of lead on the nose. So I've had, I've had to add quite a fair proportion of lead on the nose to get it to fly straight, if that makes sense, and get it to stop banking and just going doing death stalls. I don't know. On one hand, we've learned that working out the CFG calculator is actually, we're well, using a CFG calculator, is actually very, very straightforward. All we need to do is just look at the blue lines on here. So we need to measure from wingtip to wingtip. We then need to measure the cord. A bit tricky in this one because we don't have that bit in the middle. Uh, the tip cord, which was the measurement on the end. 
and the one which is a bit confusing you need to measure from that wingtip if there's a, a line going across there that distance there which in my case was 150 or 15 centimeters uh, in there and I've been to put that in there it's given us a CG, CG mark about the uh, about what they said in the manual but what's actually going on in the air is a whole different ballpark so I am personally thinking that we've got an issue with uh, Elevon movement causing it to stall but I don't know I, I'm gonna say that I'm stuck what do you think it is and uh, any suggestions good bad or ugly uh, do let me know in the comments section underneath this episode and if you think I've done the COG calculator wrong as well uh, please also let me know in the comments because I would like definitely like to uh, make a proper episode on the COG calculator uh, at, obviously at a later date so with that said if you are out flying today very very happy days I will be flying today because we've been and bought the uh, nephews mm. Excuse me, some of those chuck gliders. Remember the. Those FMS chuck gliders? We bought the nephews then. And so the girls didn't get left out. They've also got an extra present each, which is also a chuck glider each as well. Happy days. So there's going to be chuck gliders going everywhere. And that reminds me, I need to go and find my Sharpie pen so I can write their names down the side of each of them so there's no arguments. Oh, that was mine one. And you know what it is with kids. So, hey ho, like I was saying, if you are out flying today, have a fantastic day to flying. Uh, if you're not, and it's a family day for you as well, happy days, happy days. I've got another family day tomorrow, so I will get again and give you an early heads up. We may not have an RC coffee chat tomorrow morning, uh, and the reason for that, I've got a funny feeling we need to be up super early and leg it across town uh, to go and terrorise my parents. Brilliant! Oh, and of course my sister as well. That's going to be great fun. <laughs> So on that note, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for tuning in for today's RC Coffee Chat. And I sincerely hope that you had a fantastic Christmas. And on that note, I'm off now. Have a great day. Cheerios.